officers out there doing their walk around. Right. They're doing a walk around while the captain comes in here. Usually sits where I am and just kind of does a safety check. So why don't we go through that real quick. Okay. Uh, this is the catch one for the captain. That is all just me, It's right? just the captain. Yeah. Okay, so circuit breakers. So do you know who the circuit breakers are actually? Behind you. Yeah, they're all back here. back here, but we're on these screens, which I think work. We've never really messed mm -hmm. with them, but... A little steering. In case that they were like out there while he's doing walk it? around and they're actually deployed a little bit. It happens sometimes when people are shutting off the aircraft, they'll forget to put that down, but as they're turning it off, they'll do the hydraulics, whatever, they'll leave them in there. Or even while they're slowly coming, still coming up, they'll be locked at like six degrees or something like that. So you don't want them moving. Hmm. Um, radar off, which is down here. Weather radar. Yep. Okay. They should be all the way to the left. Okay. ADG manual release. Emergency flat moment. There. Uh, battery master switch on. Go right there. That's the safety check. Why don't we go through the flows now for the captain? <coughs> so this is where I turn the AP on. So yeah, you go over there, you turn the, to make sure the master's on, right? Okay. on. Okay. Fire safety test, hold it. Yeah, until it says hold it. Looks we'll like fire system okay, and that's good. Uh, so it's on the right hand side. See so this fire system okay. Oh yeah, great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna move over here, and then we open turn the APU. Well, do we do this first, or? Oh yeah, yeah, it's fine. Right. on. You can go on this one. one. Door and we go to the door page. APU door nope, closed. The right there. So it's just AP, the APU stuff like that. At the bottom is just door closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It actually doesn't show up on the door. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. It's not. It's not a pressurized door. Door open. So that started. Uh -huh. I hope it's not a pressurized door. <laughs> no. cool. Midair. Five minutes to do it. Let me get those master caution, master warning lights off. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so that's on. Oh, why is my screen not on yet? Because yours only turns on when you have full AC power on. Okay. So once the APU is fully on and running, because you'll notice it's having it fast enough, the APU is on, but the generator has not started getting up there. Oh, okay. It's not quite up to there. But it'll come up, lights start blowing up, and they come Oh, there we go. Yep. Alright, let's continue. Okay, now I don't really know where to go from here. Okay, so go the battery master, we did our fire. Turn that on, cool, now we don't have to worry about, you know, the full thing overheating or anything. Now we go through to the top. We can get our boost pumps on. Cool. Those will come on. Then we come down there, we check our bleed switches, make sure they're all in the center position. And the isolation valve is closed. Cool. Then we go down to our start page. Or sorry, our start. Our, make sure that there's no motory engines or anything there, and our continuous emission is off. Cool. And we come down and make sure hydraulic 3A is on. Yeah. Alright, and then we go to what next? Do you remember? Down here? Then we check 
DLT. Make sure it's on hard reset. That's on on, obviously. We don't want that to be on. The next thing, we come down to the glare shield, right? The AP. Basically, so this area is called the glare shield, by the way. Yeah. So, basically, it's going to sure transfer is enabled. Okay. Those are basic things off the top. Okay. Ah, oh, it's still good. That's fine. Mm -hmm. We'll get that on later. Cool. Come down here and we do our test. So, first thing we do is our anti skew test, right? Anti skew is on, I'll turn it off. Oh, and make sure the sensor's worked. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Alright, then we do, yep. And this is the one I'll start talking to you. Everything else is good. Some captains love to do the lamp test. Make sure there's no obvious lights that are dim, especially on the uh, emergency stuff. Like, turn that on. It's always kind of a good idea to also make sure that the master warning, master caution, that's what the snare pops on. And if you notice, like, flip it up. So, uh, so this. Lamp test one. Yep. And that's all, like, your stall thing. His is not if you go to the two. Uh -huh. Now you do two. Not his. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like. Backups and everything. Things are on different buses. Okay. Cool. And some are here with both. Alright, make sure all the switches are guarded. If we don't want those on, high power schedule is not engaged. Why is that light not coming on? The one very on the left. The roll cell. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. Nap on Alright, so next thing we do is we come down, make sure that our first reversers are engaged. Are engaged? Yep, they're armed. Oh, right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First, they're on. Oh, let me make sure these are all in the correct position. Mm -hmm. Spiral. 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 Take it down here and you know, make sure that the comms are all good. They're not dim or broken. The switches are broken or anything. Come down here and sometimes I have to make sure that these are on bright. They were actually set with this. It's okay to have them on bright. Yeah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but um, cool, we come down here, make sure our clear bears are off. Cool. This goes to him. Okay. Cool. We come over here, press these buttons. This is the FMS, right? Uh, that's actually the transponder stuff. Okay. So the transponder is okay. being based off of his. Okay. 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 Over here, stab trim. Just press those. Press the mock trim. And the yaw dampers. Those are all coming off. So the yaw dampers are coming off. Cool. They're all engaged here. And yaw dampers off. Cool. Make sure that these are obviously on normal. Wait, did you see on the ED1 for that or ED2 for that? What? Where did you see that those, uh, Step trim and mock trim. Was it on the ED? Let's disengage They don't want to disengage. They're over there. It would say, it would say step one, step two. Okay. Cool. Come over here, make sure these are there. Let's see if it works today. Nope, it's still broken. AG well stowed in the emergency. So. Press these two, this one, and these and two. Mm -hmm. Normal, normal, normal. And then the bag, the button break. Yep, and then it's flowing. Cool. So now the first officer comes in and does the right. Oh, um, set it there. That's the first thing. Does it really start the engine? Wow. 
<laughs> he starts the engines, but we're definitely not starting right now. Okay, so what's the very first thing? I'm going to tell you right now, it's the very top right. Cabin pressure. Make sure that is set. It's our cabin pressure switch. This way. Nope. No. It's the little knob. Cabin pressure. Make sure that's as close as we can to uh, three. Oh, yeah, there. Whatever meant the cell plays, meant the cell plays. It's 3. I was forgetting. 341. 341. So as close as you can to 341. As close as you can. It's super touchy, I know. It's good enough. Ooh. Oh. 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 There we go. Yeah, good enough. Cool. <laughs> 350 is fine. Okay. Right, so the next one is. For sure. Our air conditioning needs to come on, so we have both our packs off. Because the run, uh, those are off because the engines are off, right? They're off because the button's on. Okay. They're actually physically off. And they won't gauge your anymore. There we go. Cool. Now let's get our fans on. Okay. We have two fans. We have that one. Yeah, right there. Cool. And the bottom one's the cargo fan. Uh -huh. Let's turn that all the way to conditioning. Again, that's dependent upon SOPs and everything. If you want on air, if you want a conditioner, uh -huh. generally conditioner's good. You can just have pests down there. Cool. So that's that. And we'll come down to the anti-ice if we need it. So today we don't need anti-ice, but we're just going to do the ice. Okay. Just hold that. It says ice down there. And we have a warning. Our caution. Cool. Okay. All right. So what's next? So we don't need anti-ice today. Uh, so we don't need any of this stuff. Windshield heat test. We do need the windshield oh. heat test. Well, let's press and hold that button. I mean, you know, something happens, right? So you need to actually take the windshield heat and put it to low. Both of them, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's good. There we go. So we need to have windshield heat on low anyways, but you have to do it in that order or else the windshield heat won't work. Okay. Cool. Now you get our probes on. What is that heat? Hmm? What is that heat? What are the probes that, that you're actually heating? Those, um, steady, uh, what is it called? Um, Pito tubes? Yeah. Pito tubes, right? Any other ones out there as well? Where is the total air temperature? You got the total air temperature probe? Are there any other ones? Is the anti ice ones here or there? What do you mean? Is the anti ice heated? Are you talking about the anti-ice probe? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the anti-ice probe? Uh -huh. Oh, oh, I see. What you're ice, ice, ice detector probe. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, I was like, probe. yes, anti-ice is always here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, sorry. Uh -huh. about that. Yeah, it's actually the angle of attack thing. It's the next one. Oh, okay. Who knows? We're going to turn this off. And there we have the static heat, angle of attack, static heat. So it's mainly those two that get really hot. Cool. All right, what's the next one? So we're moving down. We need to get our sterile light on, right? So the sterile light actually is a light next to the cockpit door on the outside. It tells the um, uh, stewardess to not come talk uh -huh. to us. Very oh. sterile cockpit. Oh, that's right. Sterile. Yep. Okay. In the painting situation, it's like dark outside of the car. Stand by compass. Have that on as well, but that's not up to you. You should make sure that this is on. Dome? Is that up here? Yeah, we don't actually have a dome anymore. It's called this thing, but that would be the dome lights. Cool. Next thing we want to do is turn our passenger side on, right? Mm -hmm. Let's also get our emergency lights to arm. Cool. Alright, so that's the whole thing from up here. Mm -hmm. Next thing we do, come here make sure the transfer is on. Right? Mm -hmm. cool. And then we come down here and do the big one, the big scary one, the big FMS. Remember how to probe down the FMS? The J. There's the yeah. J, right? Mm -hmm. What is the J? Show the the uh, plaque flare, yep. and legs, yep. performance, and. Yep. Uh, the empty menu. Yeah, the empty menu and radio. Perfect. So let's go through it. <coughs> okay, Memphis to St. Louis again. Uh, so Memphis and L1 and then St. Louis and R1. Yeah. Our origin is going to be KMEM, right? KMEM. Yeah. 
Actually, no, we're not. My bad. We're doing later. So, we're going to be doing the Elvis 4 departure, but we're going to keep that in mind here because we're programming it first. Okay. But before we do too much, is there anything wrong with our PFDs? Yours is fine. Yours is not. PFDs. Yes. Mine's fine. The HSI specifically. Anything different? Specifically where it says FMS, uh -huh. yeah. which is yellow, right? So we uh -huh. want to make sure yours is on white needles just like his because we want them on independent systems. Uh -huh. The one that says nav source, top right, uh -huh. let's go to the right on that one until it has this FMS 2 in white letters. There we go. Okay, now we're on two independent systems. The white one means you're basically on his computer. Uh -huh. so, the white one? Sorry, the yellow Bins, one. Yellow yeah. one. <laughs> because I'm, I'm on my computer now. So. Cool. Because if we mess with that, it'll switch some stuff around in the FMS. If we program it and then try to switch that, it'll kind of mess up. Alright, so let's go do our departure procedure. Let's press departure arrivals twice, right next to white. Okay, let's hit uh, departure. Okay. Let's find the Elvis 4 departure. If you notice, it's not on there, right? Next page. It's the next page button on the right hand side, top right. Okay. Yep. There it is, Elvis 4, so we can L3. Cool. There you go. And we're going to use the N tree transition. So let's hit next page. Let's see it. Oh, there's entry. There we go. Yep. And let's hit execute. Or actually, let's do sorry, my bad. Uh, uh, next page. Uh, yes. Yeah. Next page. Three, three, three six. Center. There we go. Execute. Let's go to our next page now. Cool. Oh, so now we have that on there. Now we'll get more into this later. Okay. This is actually incorrect. So. The actual departure procedure, if you notice how hilariously low it is, it's like two things. Um, it wants you to go off 020 degrees off the Memphis VOR. The problem with this is you notice from the 36 center and then it goes straight to the Memphis VOR. That you'll be doing a huge turn back to the Memphis VOR and then falling out. We don't want to do that. Okay. So let's take entry and put it on top of Memphis. Now it's going straight to that. Mm -hmm. Now obviously when you take off, it'll generally give you a heading, but it's going to be mm -hmm. zero, 020 zero degrees to entry. I don't know why the computer does that. Where are you reading 020? Zero, zero? Oop. That gives you your bearing. So you're right above that entry, it's 020 zero, zero degrees. Zero, 012? 012 zero, degrees. Right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway. Cool, so we have that in there. So that's our departure. So why don't we keep going? We'll do our uh, performance page. Let's actually go to the flight plan real quick. Click on St. Louis. Alright. So you have this copied in there. So mm -hmm. it actually took what was in there. Now let's go to the legs page. And put that. Cool. Take a look at that. Now we have a full flight plan. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to go to St. Louis. So that's okay. Cool. So let's go to performance. Performance. Advisory V now. We want to make sure that that's always enabled. So go over here now, switch real quick, and switch it back to the LVO. Because it's basically 
Yeah, because mine's disabled. Yeah, because mine's disabled. So we don't want to mess around. It'll kind of just disable that because it gets switching to another computer. So let's re-enable that. That's kind of why we want to make sure we're on white labels and everything because it does reset things when we go different. Cool. Let's go to performance and listen. Initialization. Top left. So in the in the actual thing, is he going to enable his and then switch it over and then enable mine, or would he reach over here? And You'd he would actually have to come over because even if you have it enabled, he goes to yours. It'll reset if it's going to the computer system. It just resets the DNS. So does he enable mine then? Yep. He'll, you will have to go over there and enable his. So on his advisory we have, let's make sure his is enabled too because it does not enable both. Okay. So when we click his. Alright, so 30 passengers. We're just going to do 30 passengers with 3,000 pounds of cargo. Okay. 30 passengers. Here we have the fuel, which is good. Alright, cruising altitude, just do 10,000. Weight 71190. That's going to base off RV speeds. Someone just get in trouble for dumping fuel all over like an elementary school or something. <laughs> it was Delta. Yep, I'm not sure if people got hurt or killed, but it was bad. They dumped fuel over over the land, which is very illegal. But they were in an emergency. Okay, so you have UV1, which is 130, right? Uh -huh. And above it, there's a select button. There's UV1. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. And that was kind of weird. Yeah, it's 131. Yeah, basically the same speed. Skywest, and I'm pretty sure they said they don't do V1 cuts anymore. They don't do V1 cuts? That's like stupid. They say they either cut it before or they cut it well after because they say the chances of getting a V1 cut is very slim. Or in the train along the possible scenario. Mm -hmm. Do you set the V2 too? So V2 is down here. 142. How do I determine it's 142 or 148? Yeah, so V2 is 142, V2 GA, which I'll be honest. That is, I think it's for V2 for go around. But mm -hmm. use the first one because we're not doing a go around. Okay. Um, 42. Okay, so the big knob targets each other. There's mm -hmm. And it's actually called BFTO on this one. Mm -hmm. but one one thing. Pretty sure that's what they said. And if it was the V1 cut, they said it was just a new thing that they stopped doing. That's weird. Okay, so we have all our V speeds in there. Why don't you go over here to the glare shield? Turn on the speed to two. No, not the speed. To one. The actual speed. No. Yeah, so the 200. Why do we set that to 200? Because you're at close proper space. Yep. So, so if you're below a shell. Below a shelf, uh, VFR corridor. Or VFR corridor through Rock or something. Right. Yeah. It's There's no speed in Rock. No, no, no technical speed restriction, with the exception of technically of being below 10,000 feet. Okay. Generally, you're going to come anywhere near 2,000 feet. Cool. So there's all our V speed set. 
what's the next part on the MFDs? We have all the performance stuff now. The menu. Go to the MFD menu, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're just setting up the stuff on the MFD. The so first thing we do, go to window, make sure that it's set to VNAV. Right now it's set to VNAV. Um, airport speed now, speed, and this approach. Oh, okay. VNAV. Yeah. Let me turn on Captain King Watch. She has that airports on, so AP or um, And have speed, altitude, wrist approach. I personally like to have the ETA on, but Captain King does not want you guys to have it, so we will just not have okay. it. Okay. I don't know why. He's got really anal on it for some reason. I told him not to do that. Okay, so the bottom right one will turn aside from left to right. Cool. Now we'll do the same thing on his. Okay. Being at upwards, speed, altitude. And Mr. Brown. Oh, yeah. Okay. And of course, if you're in flight and you're having trouble seeing something on the screen, What's the last bit of our FMS? It's radials. Yep, make sure those run on too. Let's see if it works today. I was having problems with it yesterday. So there's one, no, there's only two buttons you push. So this is auto slash manual. We want those both on auto. Yep, now they're auto too. Okay. Cool. Okay, come on, double check. Okay, that's what we're today. Yes. Yesterday we were having trouble for some reason. This decided to just completely stop working. So we had to tune the radios through this, and then that thing failed. Anyway, okay. Okay. Cool. And that's the last of the FMS. So let's go back to the legs page. I usually have the legs page up. And we'll get used to that when we're doing actually from traveling across. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you need to do anything like holes, this could be a great job. Okay. Oh, let's see. So we know we're going at 10,000 feet, so why don't we put that into the autopilot? 10,000 feet. Heading. Nope. We do our checklist. Okay. We do our flows, we're all done with them, and then we double check them with the checklist. Okay. Um, check. Yep. Uh, aircraft documents. Check. Emergency equipment. Check. Safety and external workaround check. Uh, complete. External workaround complete. Uh, pedal, fences, and harness. Uh, just the right. Radio warning panel. Well, where did we get that one? So, your right hand, you mm -hmm. see those three buttons? Mm -hmm. Audio warning panel. <coughs> I don't even know how to mess with that stuff. Okay. 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 Okay.
fuel. Fuel. 81. The yeah. fuel is. Are you checking the fuel? Yeah. We are checking, right? So you can just say check. Come here. Okay. Yeah. Bleeds. That was your ECU. That was, that was your ECS page. You checked okay. it, right? You already checked that. So that's the idea is you already went through all this, so you can just say check. Okay. Always back to the same page. Check. check. APU. On and running. Start panel. Uh, check. Start pass right here. Hydraulics. Hydraulics checked. Um, easy two. Okay, we checked. Um, ELT. Uh, pressurization. Checked. Air conditioning. Uh, Checked. Ice detector test complete. Windshield heat low. Uh, emergency lights armed. Standby compass. Check. Uh -huh. Yep. Stall test. You can do it if you want. Yep. Let's lift up the guard switch. Install. The pressure's gonna get loud. <laughs> Steering. Clocks. Set left. I guess. There we go. Oops. There we go. Set right. Uh, FS control panel. Check right, instrument panels. Check left. Check right. ICAS uh, and standby instrument. Check. So, the EFIS is the whole system, right? And ICAS is the center ones. Mm -hmm. Right? And standby instruments. And our instrument panels are our left and our PMD. Mm -hmm. So, so EFIS is EFIS is like the whole system we created. Everything. Mm -hmm. The ICAS are the center too. PD one eighty two. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. Um. Anti skid test. Complete. Okay. Mac. Uh, MLG overheat test. Complete. Upper pedestal. Uh, up here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's a pedestal. That's yeah. the whole thing. Yep. Uh, check. Uh, thrust lever quadrant. Checked. Avionics. Check. Trims. At this point, when we do the avionics, is all the frequencies supposed to be entered in? Generally, yeah. Okay. We're not really messing with frequencies. Okay. Uh, uh, trims. Trims. You got the stab, the mock, and then the yaw damper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Trims. Hold on. What uh, trims you said? Stab. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, These two. Aileron trim, water trim, trim yeah. Yeah. and elevator trim, which is on your TR. What? What was the number of it? 
Okay. Okay, lower pedestal. Check. Uh, flight management system. Set left. Set right. RVSM qualification. An autopilot and attitude alerting transponder and uh, attitude alerting system and attitude reporting transponder and two ADC. How many of each of those do you have to have? Two ADCs. Two ADCs. Both uh -huh. have to be operational. Uh huh. And two, two autopilots, autopilots, but one needs to one be, has all. To be operational. Uh -huh. So you, you both you need two of all of them, but only one has to be operational. Uh -huh. I know it's weird. But the aircraft is not certified to go into our base. Airspace and airspace only has one autopilot system, even though it's the one operational. Um, but yeah. All right. So the next thing we do is our takeoff briefing, right? Uh huh. I meant to get you guys this one, but you have to have it. I got it. Yep. Right. So go for it. So uh, this will be flaps 8 takeoff on runway 36 center, any master caution, master warning or abnormality period to 80 knots will cause a rejected takeoff and any master warning or the aircraft unable or un unsafe to fly will be cause for a rejected takeoff at speed greater than 80 knots and less than V1. Call the emergency. Who calls the emergency? So, the don't, yeah, don't I, or the non, the non flying pilot non -flying. generally is the one who calls the emergency. Okay. So you can just say, so in that one says call the emergency, say, you'll call the emergency, because you're, you're technically briefing it to him, right? Okay. Say, okay, you'll call the emergency. Okay. And in case of malfunction after V1, call out the malfunction. Who calls the malfunction? Non flying pilot, yep. Yeah. No actions will be taken until stabilized the second seg <laughs> stabilized in the second segment. Is the second after about a thousand? Yeah, that's the second segment. Okay, so what is we just read that? What does it all mean? So if something master happens, caution, master warning. warning. If all that happens, Abnormality, right? So any abnormalities. Just because those aren't blinking with something weird going on, it's still stop the airplane, right? Or if we're both in disagreement, right? Yeah, yeah, or if you're in disagreement or for any reason. Yeah. Cool. Above 80 it has to be a master warning. Mm -hmm. And then once we're off past V1, we gotta get the first segment stabilized and then figure it out. Stabilize the second segment of one. Mm -hmm. Cool, just wanna double check that. Alright, so if you know the requirements, what's the first one of the requirements? Uh, send our instrument departure. Yep, so at that point, that's where you brief the set. We brief the departure, uh, the takeoff, and our briefing departure. So, I got the chart for. Okay. So, again, it's just like a um, an approach. Why was mine always default? It's the same place. I was wondering that. Also, I don't know why it also. There it goes. Bar. Wait. There we go. It was upside down. That was fun. Cool. Mm -hmm. The first thing we do, just like in an approach, we go, this is the Memphis, Tennessee, yep. Elvis 4 departure, right? Mm -hmm. And I got 10 3 Golf, 29th of June in 2018. Yeah, so, we want, so you can confirm that, right? Yep. Okay. So next thing we do is we come all the way over to the left. Mm -hmm. Airport so elevation. Airport elevation at 300. 41 feet. Okay, our transition altitude is 18,000. Uh -huh. you, you know why we, you don't technically have to, but I always like to have everyone kind of read that one. Do you remember why? I'm not sure if I talked to that one. So in the United States, our transition altitude in the class alpha airspace is 18,000 feet. <coughs> Most places around the world, it's 10,000 feet. Okay. So if, if you fly into and out of like, I believe Mexico, mm -hmm. for any reason, or if you fly internationally, either of you, you'll notice it's going to probably be 10,000, but it's kind of a good one to bring up. Okay. Because here in the States it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You see all this stuff over here? We're not going to worry about that. Because we already have all that. We're just not going to worry about it. Okay. Cool. And we come over here to our initial climb. And we're going to go down to the runway we are attempting to go by. 36 center. Here okay. we go. Um, so read the pertinent information. The important information. 
basically meaning if you notice turbojet aircraft, that's fine. We don't we don't care to read it on turbojet aircraft. Okay, uh, turbojet aircraft climbing heading so zero one. No on yeah, we don't turbojet stuff. So what are you supposed to read there? Just the first one, turbojet aircraft. Okay. Okay, uh, climb heading one, uh, zero one two, or as assigned by the ATC. This is a really easy departure. Mm -hmm. Okay, our top altitude will be uh, five thousand because we're jet. Five thousand feet, unless the ATC tells you otherwise, right? Uh -huh. All right, then we go down to our routing and read that. Routing. Only the jet aircraft stuff. Though. Jet aircraft maintain. Mm -hmm. Start from the top. It'll say jet aircraft and prop aircraft, so let's start from the top. Okay. Um. Accept vectors to join assigned tran transition radial. Cross the transition fix. Continue on current heading. Expect vectors from Memphis Center to to join uh, five rod. Uh, he can't get rid of that, yeah. Jet aircraft maintain five thousand or requested altitude if lower. Here to our takeoff obstacles. Let's find the one for three <coughs> six center. Six center, light pole, 1948 feet from DER. So, what does DER stand for, if you remember from me or instruments? So I'm not, they don't really go over it too much here, but it's actually quite important. You know what it stands for? It's, it's not a like radial or a fix or anything, and it stands for departure end of runway. Okay. Yeah, so it's 1,948 feet from the departure end of the runway. Okay. okay. Mm. And 928 feet right of center line. And 77 AGL, which is 336 MSL. Right. So basically, the light pole is 1,948 feet from the departure of the runway. And to the right of the center line, 77, it's uh, 928 feet. And mm -hmm. it's 77 feet tall, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of notifying us of that. Cool. So the next one here is we're going to go over here to this terrifying looking page here. And since reading that routing, do you realize what it is? Uh, basically, you're literally taking off here and heading there. Yeah. There's just basically a whole bunch of other transitions. Okay, so you can also you're there. using the entry. Using entry. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're going to be taking off here. We're and we're going to be off. heading at 012 degrees to entry, which is also 010 degrees radial off of the Memphis oh, VOR, okay. if we're using radial, so we're not. Okay. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to climb to 5,000, mm -hmm. at least until we're told to go to 10,000, right? Okay. Do we need to set the heading? I'll just, I'm just going to go to 10,000. I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. Cool. And that's how you reset that departure. Cool. Super easy, right? Mm -hmm. Top, left. So right. Again, you kind of just read the name over there, and then kind of just go initial climb, mm -hmm. and then kind of just kind of go down and then to the left. Mm -hmm. And you kind of end up just sort of briefing that like this. Okay, we're going to head that way. Departure and running. Yeah. Cool. Now you say any questions, right? Is the departure and running different than just regular and running? Uh, no. It's basically, it's like your 3 6 center is um, uh, signifying from the opposite end you're taking off from. So the idea is it's not. 1948 feet from the runway. So uh -huh. it's for specifically from the end of that runway. So that's oh, okay. like your beginning. It's just kind of heading up on okay. the Okay. Okay. So we're all done with that, right? Mm hmm. Is there anything next? Before start checklist. Before start the checklist, so I'll go for that. Mm -hmm. Are we doing that? Happen? Uh, yeah. Roger, sir. Before start checklist, crew uh, crew two and masks. So she had checked and forty. Remember that oxy eighteen fifty. Right? Yeah. That's enough. Oh yeah. That's enough for three people, and then it's up uh -huh. one thousand one hundred meters per uh -huh. two. 1110 and 810. Right. Since I'm here, I'm going to first two. Okay. Alright, we got the enough oxygen and passenger signs on landing elevation, say of 3000. Oh no, 331 feet. Push against 
So yeah. landing on these and the pressure out. Uh, yeah. yeah so where was it? Cap this one. Because yeah. we want to pressurize the cap before landing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, altimeters. Two nine zero two set left. Two nine zero two set right. There is also two nine zero two. So the captain needs to say set left, oh, set center. center. All right. Uh, <coughs> FMS. Set left. Set right. Where's auto tune? Auto tune on the radio. Are we supposed to auto? Set auto tune. Set auto tune left. Set auto tune right. Radios and navates. Except for departure. <coughs> uh, no Thrust reverser. Armed. Okay, takeoff briefing. Let's do the clear to start check. Clear to start. Clear to start check. Personal electric <coughs> devices. Uh, mine's on. Mine's on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's supposed to be supposed to be <laughs> off. Uh, APU and AC electrics. <laughs> we go back to the uh, electric page to check. Or? <laughs> all right, uh, papers. Take off data. So that's what we do. Take off data. It's our B speed. Uh -huh. so take off data. Take off data. Set. Set. And I need you to read them for V1 and V2. Okay. V1 130, VR 131, V2 142, VT 194. That's your target speed. And generally, I also like to add, like I see, a V1 130, VR. Trims. They are green. You say green and indicating six point four. Green two point four. Right, uh, fly instrument. Check left. Check right. Beacons are in doors. They are closed. By the way, BFTO stands for final takeoff speed. Doors are closed. Have you guys seen what it looks like when those are open? Uh, are you sure? Yeah, it's pretty easy. Okay. You know, so some of them are yellow, right? Some yeah. of them are red. The red ones obviously have pretty important ones. Uh -huh. Pressurized ones. We don't want that to break. Okay. Close and lock. Beacons. On. Uh, fair pumps and quantity? Uh, they are on and 18780. Okay. Hydraulic pumps? Parking brake. It's uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Fuel check valve. So you guys know where the fuel check valve is? It's on the hydraulic. No, it's so uh. We actually can't see it. So what we're gonna be doing right now is basically, well, you can't see it, but you can't check it until one of your engines has started. So we do a fuel check valve check twice. Once on before we start. Once as we start the first engine, and once after we finish landing it. Okay. So when you see that, it says uh, fuel check valve, just say we'll check that after the fetch until they start. Um, just say we'll check it after engine two. We'll check it after engine two. Cool. All right, you're cool. clear to start. All right. Let's 
So when we get our nap light up, any type of cabin can, which we have our nap light or beat on for the engine, but let's get our nap light on. Yep, but if you notice, uh, they're going to be on as well, kind of telling. Let's get our nap light open. Oh, my jet's on. Yep. Cool. The airlines kind of use it to indicate to everyone we're about to start engine. So. All right, so, Gab, why don't you tell me how to start engine 2? Uh, start engine 2. Okay, uh... By the way, that on right there, that uh, said? Yeah. That's because, if you notice, scooter flip over the <coughs> Because, it, because of the uh, imbalance? You notice you have the arrow, it's pointing that way. So we're mm -hmm. balancing the two tanks. Mm -hmm. Remember how we turn this on before we take off? That turns on manual. It'll take a second, but that has stopped the fuel transfer. I think that was just for balancing the... Yep, it was balancing it, but... Showing that because it was, it was balancing the two things, but remember how we turned this on before takeoff? That stopped it. Oh, okay. So we don't have any transfer of wings while we're taking off. Mm -hmm. Back on, back on. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Good. Uh, while it was there. Okay. That's cool. So, how, how do we start engine 2? Press start, wait for N2 to be 20%. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then add fuel. Press the start button. Put you in the hole. Just press it. <coughs> cool. So, we're seeing N2 rising. So, your handies come right down here. Mm -hmm. Starting at 20. And there's 20, let's bring up the idle. It is. And it's going to stay there in case of a hot start or a fire. Mm -hmm. I wish I could show you guys a hot start, but uh, for some reason it likes to freak out when I do hot starts. <laughs> and it doesn't go right. Okay, I don't know why. Maybe at the end of today I'll have to show you how a hot start works. After we get that engaged, we look at and we look at the ITT. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what ITT stands for? So inertial turbine temperature. It's the interchange turbine temperature. Okay. And now uh, they kind of went up to there and it came back down. Now it's a good start. Okay. All right, so you say good start. Good start to end the food. Okay. So Captain, I want you to go over here first of all and turn off both fuel pumps. the field page. All right, you notice we have both of our electric fuel pumps that go to our engines are both off, but the engine is still running. It's called mode of flow. Basically, it's we're testing that the engine will still run only on the engine drum. Okay. That's our fuel check mode. Okay. Right, let's turn back on. Come back on. Look green. That's right, so our first destination. All right. Now I want to tell them to turn on engine one. Yeah, let's start it. Okay, uh, one. Exact same thing. And two twenty percent goes to the idle. goes up and goes down. Check valve on the last lane. Come in and land with the fill check valve. So 
we come in for our last landing, we'll kill engine two. And we'll only catch engine one, we'll go check the object on that one. Okay, and you're going closed. Yeah, I'll just cool down over time, so. All right, mm -hmm. cool. All right, after a start check, bleeds, packs. Uh, so bleeds, come over here, make sure that the bleeds are good. Right. They're good and it's auto and on. This is the one I don't have marked up, so I don't know. Who says what? Yeah. Wait, I need to, that's on, I just cut it off. Yeah, we don't want to Can I just take a picture of that? I'm actually going to put you guys off on it. Okay. Right, um, anti-ice as required. They both so are low. I don't want to hear anti-ice, so just say off. Okay. Because they're anti-ice. Like, we're always going to have the windshield heats on. We're going to have the probes on, so don't worry about that. Okay. It's more talking about this, the wing anti-ice and the cowl anti-ice. Just say off. Okay. Anti-ice, off. Okay, uh, probes. Yep, they both are on. And transponder. The transponder's just here. It's on me. So where do you actually input transponder codes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, twist. Well, we, don't really, we don't really mess with that now, right? Welcome to the days before. Really? Yeah, that's how it works. APU <laughs> and electrics. Flaps. Um, we are zero. Okay. Both, I believe, are so zero. Zero and indicating zero. Okay. Zero and indicating zero. Yep. Flight controls. Yeah, just like just like free for us. That's fine. We're actually gonna check. Okay. Messes up the signal here for some reason. Uh huh. Uh, waters. So basically, you do that you first one as you're, oh, yeah. as you're parked up thing, right? And then we uh -huh. taxi back here, push us back, they all completely disconnect oh, yeah. everything. Uh -huh. And then you just, then Captain Lewis, you call for below the line. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start below the line. Alright, uh, after start check below the line, rudders. Eject. Nose rest steering. Armed. Brake stem. Start check up, yeah. Make sure we're starting to say that as well. Alright, taxi one, two, three. Taxi down, taxi away Juliet to Romeo, hold short of 3600. Um, engine one, two, three. Taxi down to taxi away Romeo, turn left Juliet, hold short of 3600. Negative, engine one, two, three. Taxi down Juliet to Romeo, hold short of 3600. Yeah, okay. backwards. A year one two three. Yeah. Text down. Romeo holds your Juliet. You had it backwards again. <laughs> oh, really? on Juliet. We texted okay. Romeo. Text him. Juliet. Juliet. Three, yep. Three, six, Turn Romeo and hold your three six seven. Sounds good. A year one two three. Did we add A year one two three in there? Oh, we didn't actually. Go to the flight plan real fast. Okay. So flight number. The bottom will have an A G I one two three.
we're all centered up and everything. So why don't we call for the before takeoff check? Right, let's do the before takeoff check. Okay, before takeoff check, uh, trail coast flow. Manual. On uh, flight attendance. What device? Where is the. Oh, yeah. Nope. Oops. Yeah. So, ready for takeoff. Um, Transponders, TCAS. Okay. In general, we would usually do a test and everything. Like we can do a test right now if you want. That's the thing. That's what we're here to do a TCAS test. Uh -huh. For a second. Right. TCAS system test. Okay. TCAS test. Okay. We don't really need to do that, so we can just handle. Okay. Um. Right, uh, radar, terrain information. Okay, so if we had like thunderstorms where we had, where we were at mountains, we'd come over here and we'd be turning this on. Right? Uh -huh. But we're not going to do that today because it's going to outside. Okay, um, <coughs> FMS. Separate departure, right? Uh -huh, separate departure. Except for runway, which one? 367, right? Uh huh. We're just double checking. Okay, so Yeah. So the FMS is set for both, right? Mm hmm Captain. Well, is your FMS set for the right runway? The answer is yes. They say set. <laughs> set for runway 367. Okay. So he's still doing his, uh, his thing, so. Okay. Uh, flaps. Set for take. Okay, so now you actually set the flaps to eight. Mm -hmm. Can we take off? Here's the flaps, right? Yeah, right. That's on you. Okay. Uh, you just, just do it. <laughs> something I'm supposed to do. Yeah, the only thing you do on this checklist really uh, for the before, above the line is make sure that it's set on the correct yeah. runway for your FMS. Okay. Cool. All right, so Flap set eight. Eight indicators, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, before takeoff check, above, above the line, line complete. Say again, Aggie 1 to 3. Line up and wait, Aggie 1 to 3. Line up and wait, runway 36 center. Okay, line up and wait, runway 36 center, Aggie 1 to 3. Okay, so Captain, as we're taking the runway, you call for the fourth below the line, right? Below the line, and you okay. actually come over here, turn on the lights. Okay, lights and strokes. All the lights, actually. Okay. And then you run the rest. Ignition and anti ice. Not needed for today, no. right? Mm hmm. And cast. Okay. Right. Check the clear. Before takeoff checklist complete, right? Uh huh. Before takeoff checklist complete. Uh, mic controls. You have radio. Uh, radios. Yeah. Cool. Your mic controls. All right. So do you remember the flows? Yep. Set thrust. Thrust set. Eighty knots. Check. Speed mode? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, positive rate. Gear up, speed mode? Yep. 400 feet. Heading? 600 feet. All pilot engage? 1000 feet. Flaps 1, flaps 0. Do the climb check. Climb thrust. Climb thrust. Oh, climb thrust. So, what you do is flaps 1, flaps 0, climb thrust, climb check. Those are things that need to get done, right? Uh -huh. so you're going to come over here and bring us down to climb. Uh -huh. right? And go over there and dial 250. Not now. Okay. Uh, so do that, 250, and control the airplane. What you do is you come over here and take all the flaps out and then run the uh, climb check. Okay? And the flow for the uh, climb check, by the way, landing lights and those come off, fresh reversers, and then the Those are kind of the important ones you want to get done very quickly. Okay, ready to go? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alright, why don't we 
we center our heading real quick? Oh. The actual heading button. Okay. Flying it. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys ready? It goes to 0, 1, 2 at, it goes to zero, one, two at 1,000 feet, right? Oh, that? Oh, when I change the pull entry. It goes to 0? Zero. 0, 1, 2. Oh, so remember how we said heading mode? Uh -huh. We're actually going to hit nav. We're actually going to... Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that will follow the... Yeah, okay. it's heading mode that we have to tell us to fly uh -huh. the heading. So when you set when you set heading, you'll actually nav instead. Yeah. Okay. It really depends on your clearance. If someone says you'll fly runway heading, or fly heading you know, zero five zero or whatever, you actually head it out. So can I actually? So can I actually say uh, heading slash nav? It would okay. Add to heading or nav. Mode. Okay. So I can Great. say nav. Okay. Ready? Get her to take off. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. One, two, three. Take her take off. Okay. Three six center. Follow the Elvis for departure as published. Time maintain ten thousand. Elvis 4, climb maintain 10,000, 36 center, fraggy 1, 2, 3. Okay. Are we ready to push the throttles yet? Never take off, take off. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now it's all engaged. Mm -hmm. Take off, take off. Take off, take off. Take off, okay. So I have to say to you, you say well. take off, take off, take off, take off again. Perfect, let's go. All right. That's uh, good. Throw set. <laughs> Gear up, speed mode. Right, right speed mode. <laughs> uh, 400. Uh, heading, nav. I'll oh, probably get yeah, yeah. Flaps one. So we're at 1,000 feet, right? You say flaps 1, flaps 0, climb 5, time check. Uh -huh. What you do is, as you're saying that, just pull up at the climb and set 250. That's all you have to do. Okay. That's before my climb pilot. When you come over here, do the flaps and run the check. 250. Alright, one to ride again. Let's do another. actually a fast way my students last time found out if you accidentally press it in it does save them so if when they're cleared like that if you just press it in they'll just bring it back up so. okay uh, set 200 on the speed for the autopilot ready to go yes sir As published for climb maintain 10,000. Clear for takeoff, 36 center, LS4, climb maintain 10,000, Aggie 1, 2, 3. Take off, take off, take off, from take off, okay. Take off, take off, take off, from take okay. Alright, let's do this. Set thrust. Can't say something wrong. Okay. 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 Speed mode. Oh, Oops, too much. 400 feet. Nav. 
Dev mode. 600 feet. All power engage. 1000 feet. Flex 1. Flex 0. Zero. Fine thrust. Gotcha. So this is a fine check.
the steep turns. It's just going to be like in the 40. We're going to turn into it. So on your attitude indicator, you see where the uh, it's pointing right now? That's 30 degrees right now. Okay. It's kind of pointing to. I know it's, it looks backwards from the G1000 because it kind of is. Um, they've apparently found that this is a more responsive wave. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird, but whatever. You see the little uh, triangle next to it? Mm -hmm. That's 45 degrees. Okay. So we're going to have a 45 degree bank, uh -huh. just like in our private when we used to do it back then. Uh -huh. And you're going to try to maintain your altitude, altitude of 10,000 here. Uh -huh. And one of the best ones to watch is going to be your uh, vertical speed indicator at the bottom right there. It's a 0.0. .0. Uh -huh. so if you kind of keep that around zero, you're not going to be moving much. Okay. So the scan for this one generally is bank. Vertical uh, speed. Out, you know, uh, bank, bank, vertical speed, altitude, speed, kind of, you kind of okay. just kind of do that. Like that. Okay. So we uh, don't reference outside, we just reference the there's, This plane is only flown in instrument conditions. Okay. So what we're going to do is, when you're ready to start it, you're mm -hmm. going to do a 360, and you're going to turn off your autopilot and start turning into it. What you want to do is kind of increase power by like 5%, just like a little much, mm -hmm. a little bit of power. But of course you can change it within if you need to, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're ready, you're doing your 360, and you're approaching it, and you're about 20 degrees from it, you will call uh, heading. You're approaching heading, you'll kind of start rolling out, pull a little bit of power out, and level it out, keeping with it. ETP minimums or commercial minimums. And when you roll out and you're ready, uh -huh. say autopilot engage, and you'll press the autopilot engage button. Okay. That is what you're created on. That altitude, that heading, that speed. Okay. When you roll out and he says autopilot engage, once that's on, that's what you're bringing. Okay. It's not coming in your final report, but that's what the air was. Supposedly. Alright, whenever you're ready, disengage the autopilot and we'll bank 45 degrees and we'll do it to the left. Okay, uh. Alright, uh, uh, I'm ready. ready.
speed, bank angle, pitch, vertical speed, bank angle, pitch, vertical speed, bank angle, pitch, vertical speed, bank angle, pitch, bank angle, vertical speed, pitch, vertical speed, bank angle, pitch, bank angle, vertical speed, pitch. Speed, bank and go. Oops, bank and go. The other way around. Pitch, which can be. Push and heady. Push and Oops. Oh, yeah, too fast. What? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Okay. Oops, there, altitude. Oops, it comes a bit late. Uh, I'll find the engage. I'll find the engage. That was oh, perfect. Okay. That, was, that was a simulator lagging on you. Uh, that. That was okay. I saw you turn. And uh, yeah. Don't worry about it. That was the okay. sick having a bit of a moment. Mm -hmm. That was perfect. That last one, that was like ATP. So that was perfect. Awesome. Thank you. You were like, with the exception of the weird glitch that just happened, you were within like, mm -hmm. I believe, 75, 50 feet. That was excellent. Ooh. Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Alright, do you guys want to do a stall? These are always kind of fun. Okay. Alright, so we're going to do a kind of basic clean configuration stall. Okay. So we're all good, no flaps or anything like that. It's kind of clean configuration, right? But what I want you to do is I want you to reduce your power to 45% and 1. that alarm, you're going to disengage the autopilot, and you're going to pitch down to full power. Okay? okay. And actually, uh, sorry, pitch uh, the aircraft nice and okay. uh, center. So don't, don't like pitching down too much. Off on disengage. Go to that for... Okay. Uh -huh. You guys ever 
here of the Buffalo Crash, the mm. famous one. One of the reasons, obviously the main reason was they had trouble sleeping, they didn't have enough sleep and rest. One of the main issues was, I believe it was the captain, when they increased power during the storm, they only put in, I believe, it was 75 or 80 percent power. And that was actually enough for them to crash the aircraft. <laughs> Memphis, Tennessee, ILS 1818 left. I got the chart 11 2, 23rd March 2018. Do you got the same chart? Nope. Okay. Uh, is that for us? This is one two seven point seven five. Don't you just do the bold stuff? Oh yeah, right. Uh, localizer yep. one one <coughs> one point one five. Final approach course one eight zero. Glide slope at Roni. We are at two thousand feet, which is one thousand six hundred ninety nine. AGL and our distant altitude for ILS approach is 100, uh, 501, which is 200 feet AGL. Airport elevation 341. Touchdown zone elevation is 300 and one feet. This one? Oh, yeah. Um, so the minimum safety altitude for uh, south. West is 2,500 and north uh, northeast is 2,100. Okay. Oh, right. So northwest 2,500, south uh, south sorry northeast 2,500. Oh southwest. yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, right, yeah I know it's yeah. kind of confusing. In case of missed approach, we climb to 900, then climb left turn to 5000. Outbound on Memphis VOR, radial 151 to Keys intersection, which is 
miles from I have 10 45 for the ME and hold and continue climbing hold to 5000 the minimum for ILS So we'll be at 3,000, we're only over at 2,000, and then you have the localizer, right? Okay. Or you have the flight slot, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. Because with this one right here, we have all of this, so we kind of already talked about it when we were up here. Mm -hmm. so right. We don't have a localizer, you know, flight slot or anything, so we're going to have less than one. We already kind of talked about that. Okay. Cool. cool. All right. Well, let's go to departure ride. Let's press that twice. Nothing there, but <coughs> I'll show you that. Yeah, radar terrain. So that's our 
weather. She says W X with up. That's our weather. Uh-huh. We'll all throw you in some weather later. Gas. Box the gas. Check is clear. And prior to uh, no. landing data set. And approach briefing is complete. Cool. <clears throat> Alright, so we're below 10,000 feet, so let's do our let's call tense check. So when you're flying the airplane, we hit 10,000 feet, call for tense checks. You say tense check, right? Tense check. So your tense check, if you notice, there's only two items. It's a mm-hmm. license sterile. Passenger lights come on, sterile light comes on. It's already on, we never turn it off. All right, so you're sterile pump. Not yet. That's actually our full lighting checklist. <coughs> so do you guys know much about, I'm curious. Okay. It's easy to turn the landing system. Before so, the final plug picks. So the before landing checklist is actually happening. Okay. But a lot of airlines will take the A1 is 10 miles on it. Generally 10 miles. But usually what a lot of them do is they'll actually turn those on the second they're cleared to land. Right? Okay. They say, okay, cleared to land, let's just get the lights on. It's one of those indicators of are we cleared to land? Yes, we are. They're lying. Oh, okay. But for us, for today, we're just going to be using the full engines. Generally, they're on 10 miles or even further out. Okay. Are you ready to go? Yes, sir. All right. Let's slow her down to 170 and prior to the... Down, flaps 30, speed 160. So let's do the speed first before we get the flaps. I'll make sure you start slowing down. <laughs> what else do we call it? Uh, you're down three rings? Nope. Flaps 45. Oh, flaps 45. Checklist. Oh, checklist. Oh, yeah. Make sure we get that up. And flight attendants advise. Dust reversers armed. Landing lights. I know it says it there, but they don't really have it on like 10 miles out. Just got the landing gears down. Flaps indicating 45. Is that 45? Flaps yes. indicating. indicating 45.
100, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10.
set the FMS. Okay. Wait, what? So 200 feet AGL. This is 501 feet. Oh, oh, yeah, right. It's okay. <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You got it backwards. No worries. Let's reset it. That's, let's reset it. You're good. You're good. Top 45, please. Uh huh. 200 feet AGL. Hey, you okay? So, the green one. Right? Uh huh. Cool. Yes, sir. Okay. One thousand. One Eight. Gear up. Uh, can you set the FMS? Yes. Set the speed for two fifty. Approach. So 
much more there. Maybe. Oh, yeah, they were on green. Yeah. Fresh moon. I don't know. Just a fresh moon. So if you notice, it's only one, right? Yeah. Do this. One thousand. So, once you look over here, see that little arrow? It's like a G1000. You have a crosswind right now. Okay. That's the maximum crosswind. The maximum demonstrated uh -huh. crosswind component. Just like what we do with the stuff. The flight director is going to be your friend. Uh huh. It's probably flight director. That's the like wind. Ooh. Five hundred. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. For a, a 28 knot crosswind. Oops, that was the, that's the maximum demonstrated crosswind component you can have in this aircraft. That was an excellent job. Alright, Peggy 1, 2, 3, oh, turn yes. right next taxi. Alright, flight controls. Alright, next taxi. Alright, Peggy 1, 2, 3, 2. This is the It's There is a. I push it, but there's another click in there. Yeah, so you have to push them up here to, mm -hmm. to engage them, right? Wait. And I click again, and now they're ready to go. You need to push both buttons up. Yeah, okay. I know it's weird. You can put it for a second. Just so you can go. See, hold up. Hold up. Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. Now they can see. You have to, you have to wait for them to click. Watch. You can watch right here. You see the, the uh, thing right here? Uh huh. Let's put them up. They're yellow right now, which means they're deploying. And they're ready to unlock. And then they click. Okay. Push both of them. Hold up. Cool. It's like...
Cool. Why don't we take a quick 10 minute break? Look at the Dewinsaw. What was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Oh, that was, that was tough. <laughs> Man, you will love this. What? You, you will love this flight. <laughs> I've landed 17 knots first in India for the when I was a super pilot. 